Our oceans are filled with a diverse display of life, from the giant whales down to microscopic planktonic organisms, and much of this life can seem quite unusual to us. In order to show you just some of the remarkable animals that occupy this planet's waters, here are five strange creatures found in the ocean. Starting off with a fish that is not only physically very strange, but also one with a pretty unusual name, the Sarcastic Fringehead. These small tube blennies may not seem particularly striking at first, but when the males start to fight for territory, things get weird. These animals can greatly extend their jaws, displaying bright colours in order to intimidate their rival, and the pair of fringe heads will often push their mouths very close together so that they're almost touching. This allows the animals to compare mouth sizes, with the larger of the two establishing their dominance over the smaller individual. The fish do give warnings before moving into wrestling mode though, signalling to one another by opening and closing their enormous mouths. This highly competitive behaviour arises from the sarcastic fringe head's territorial tendencies, which itself is due to a fascinating example of sexual selection. The females of the species will lay their eggs in a shelter that the male then protects, and so finding and keeping somewhere for the females to deposit their eggs is very important for the male's chances of reproduction. Therefore, the sexual selection pressure from females has resulted in the evolution of the massive jaws and competitive nature of the males that allow them to defend their home from others. The sarcastic fringehead inhabits waters of the Pacific Ocean, ranging from San Francisco down to central Baja California in the south. These animals will use a wide range of different structures to make their home in, such as empty shells, under rocks, and in holes that clams have bored. In some cases, sarcastic fringe heads have even been seen inhabiting beer cans and other man-made objects that have found their way to the sea floor. The males, as mentioned before, then fiercely guard their homes, fighting off anything that gets too close to them, including the occasional human diver. An unfortunate side effect of the impressive male jaws is that it likely makes feeding a bit more difficult. It's not currently known for certain what these fish feed on, as other tube blennies tend to eat tiny plankton, however sarcastic fringe heads can't suction feed. They probably act as ambush predators for much of the time, leaping out of their burrows at passing prey, and they've been recorded consuming squid eggs when squid start spawning, however these fish also likely eat a range of other organisms. Next we come to the wonderfully strange bobbit worm. This creature is a kind of polycate worm, which are also known as bristle worms, and the way this animal lives and feeds is absolutely fascinating, and a little terrifying. Inhabiting warm waters all across the world, the bobbit worm, which is technically known as Eunice aphroditois, creates a burrow for itself in the seafloor at depths in the ocean of between 10 and 40 metres. It will then sometimes poke just the front part of its body out of the sediment, displaying five antennae which it uses to detect the presence of potential prey items, such as fish and other worms. Once the worm identifies a potential meal passing nearby, it will strike at it with remarkable speed and force, utilising its fearsome jaw-like structure, which is a kind of feeding appendage known as a pharynx. These organisms have actually been known to slice some fish in half due to the power of their strikes, and once the unfortunate prey has been caught, what remains of them is dragged underneath the seafloor to the bobbit worm layer to be consumed. Now, this is pretty terrifying by itself, but what's more is that these worms can reach astonishing sizes. The average length of a bobbit worm is 1 metre, but ones of much larger sizes have been found before and in 2009 an individual reaching a ridiculous 3 metres long was discovered inhabiting a fishing harbour in Japan. It apparently weighed about 433 grams and had 673 segments to its body. The way this creature got its name is also an interesting anecdote, with some people claiming it may have been inspired by the story of John Bobbitt. I'd like to keep this video as family friendly as possible and so I won't explain what happened to him here, but if you go and google his name you're sure to find out about that fun tale. However, it's actually not known for certain how this animal really got its name, with others claiming it's nothing to do with John Bobbitt. Bobbit worms have also been known to cause quite a bit of trouble for aquariums when they manage to sneak their way into exhibits by getting picked up with coral when they're young and very small. They certainly don't stay small forever though, and soon the worms become a big problem. 
One case of this happening was in an aquarium in Newquay in the UK, with a bobbit worm called Barry. A particular tank seemed to be getting attacked, with coral and fish getting sliced up and going missing, so the whole enclosure was emptied and traps were set up to catch whatever was causing this damage. However, the traps actually ended up getting destroyed overnight, meaning the worm must have consumed the bait as well as the traps. Eventually the worm was caught, but this just goes to show how incredibly tough and vicious these strange creatures can be. The Asian sheep's head wrasse is a particularly weird fish, with some absolutely incredible biology. It may not be the nicest looking creature in the ocean, but it's certainly very interesting. Along with the bobbit worm, you may recognise this creature from Blue Planet 2, in which case you'll probably know what I mean when I say it's a pretty remarkable animal. Belonging to the highly diverse wrasse group, known as Labridae, the Asian sheep's head wrasse inhabits ocean waters around Japan, China, and North and South Korea. Clearly, the most notable feature of this species are the huge bulbous foreheads and chins of the males, caused by excessive bone growth that results in large bumps appearing on many different kinds of fish. This species can also reach surprisingly big sizes for a wrasse, achieving lengths of up to a metre and maximum weights of over 14 kilograms. The Asian sheep's head wrasse became fairly famous when, as I mentioned, it was featured on Blue Planet 2 in 2017. The film crew recorded these animals in waters near Japan, and managed to capture a remarkable transformation on film. These wrasse are known to be sequential hermaphrodites, which means they are able to permanently change their sex at a certain point in their lives. In the case of the Asian sheep's head wrasse, once females reach a certain age and size, they can change into males. Blue Planet 2 showed the transformation of one particular female, as it hid away for months before returning with the bulbous facial protrusions of the males, as well as testes. It then proceeded to battle the dominant male of the area, which it had once mated with while female, defeating it and becoming the new dominant individual. This kind of sex transformation may seem pretty incredible to us, but for fish it's actually a fairly common occurrence, with around 500 species of fish known to be hermaphroditic to some extent. It's certainly a great adaptation, increasing the chances that the individual's genes will be passed on to the next generation even in a changing social or environmental situation. There's something else that makes these strange fish so remarkable though, and that's the relationship of one individual to a human. A Japanese diver who has been caring for an underwater shrine for many years seems to have a connection to a particular Asian sheep's head wrasse that he has named Yoriko. Apparently, the man has known Yoriko for over 25 years, and whenever he visits the shrine, he knocks on a bit of metal and the fish appears to greet him. It's quite adorable in a weird way. The next creature we'll look at is the strap-toothed whale. Cetaceans, the group that includes whales, dolphins and porpoises, come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, and many of them are pretty weird. The strap-toothed whale is just one of them. This animal is known by a few different names, including Layard's beaked whale, the long-toothed whale, and the strap-toothed beaked whale, and the species favours cold, temperate waters in the southern hemisphere, with strandings reported from Australia, Tasmania and New Zealand, as well as a few in Argentina and South Africa. This whale is a member of the toothed whale family called Zephyridae, which includes many other species of beaked whales, but the thing that makes this species so strange is its unusual dentition. Beaked whales generally all have only two well-developed teeth in their mouths, and this is indeed the case in the strap-toothed whale. However, in the males of the species, the teeth get a bit extreme growing to over 30 centimetres or about one foot in length, and curving back over the top of the snout, this dentition actually stops the males from being able to open their mouths any wider than 11 to 13 centimetres. This is likely to be another example of sexual selection at work, since it only occurs in adult males, and they are assumed to use them in intraspecific combat. This would explain the extensive scarring that can be witnessed on the bodies of male strap-toothed whales. It was thought that the restricted mouth movement imposed by the elongated teeth had some kind of negative effect on the ability of males to feed, since the size of the prey they can consume is greatly reduced by the structures, in which case it would be an instance of sexual selection acting against natural selection. 
However, more recently it's been suggested that the teeth actually have no effect on the feeding habits of male strap-toothed whales, since this species is thought to suction feed like other beaked whales do, taking in prey such as squid and small fish and then swallowing them whole. Anyway, this is certainly a pretty strange bit of anatomy, even for the generally weird beaked whales, and it seemed like a worthy addition to the list. Finally, we come to the giant oarfish. These enormous lampreiform fish inhabit every ocean on the planet, but are not seen very frequently at all, due to the great depths they live at. There are actually three different species of oarfish, however the most famous one, and the largest, is the giant oarfish, Regalicus glesni. The giant oarfish is so large in fact, that it's actually the longest bony fish currently known to exist, achieving incredible lengths of approximately 10 meters. However, there is apparently an unconfirmed report that an individual reaching 17 meters was witnessed, though there's currently no way to prove this. The physical appearance of the giant oarfish is very distinctive and makes it very well suited to its deep ocean habitat. These animals possess a highly elongated body, with a very long fin running along their dorsal surface too. The first few rays of the dorsal fin, just above the head, are much longer than the rest and have fleshy regions on their ends, forming a sort of crest-like structure. They also have a similar condition on their pelvic fins, which are extremely elongate with fleshy lobes at the tips. These fins are allegedly how the animals got their name of oarfish, since the structures look similar to oars. These animals are also completely scaleless, and their bodies are fairly flabby, a result of the relative absence of currents at depth in the water, meaning they have little actual muscle mass. Usually when oarfish come near the surface, possibly due to storms bringing them up from the depths, they end up dying, though a few have been spotted at the surface of the water still just about alive. Oarfish tend to filter feed mostly on zooplankton, and they possess adaptations of the gills known as gill rakers that help them catch and retain tiny bits of edible material. Their mouths are relatively very small, and they lack teeth, so they swim around with their mouths open in order for tiny organisms to become trapped in their gill rakers. However, oarfish have also been seen to prey on small fish and squid, in addition to some jellyfish. As you can probably imagine, these animals can look pretty weird when witnessed at the ocean's surface, especially if they're close to death and are thrashing about. Their long, winding bodies and red crests would certainly look quite extraordinary to passing sailors, almost like a sea serpent. It's therefore thought that these animals are probably the supposed sea monsters reported in some eyewitness accounts, and maybe they're even the source of such myths and legends from cultures all over the world. Oarfish are definitely fairly strange creatures then, especially if they manage to generate tales of sea serpents, and they're absolutely fascinating to learn about. So there are five strange creatures that can be found inhabiting our oceans. Now, obviously there are many, many more than just five weird animals in the sea, so we can always make a part two to this video. Let me know if you'd like to see that, and also feel free to leave suggestions in the comments for what you think are the strangest ocean creatures, and we could feature them in the next part. Hopefully this list has been able to demonstrate some of the incredible diversity and uniqueness of the life we share this planet with, and I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you'd like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.